Thank you very much. Good morning, gentlemen of the press. Dear Lagosians, I address you today with a heavy heart. But not just as your elected governor, I do so as a father and as a brother. I do so as one who is touched by the infirmities and the feelings of his people. I do so as a part of the collective humanity that we all share. Indeed, I'm saddened today. Yesterday's events were no doubt some of the darkest gradients of our history as a state and as a people. As you are perhaps aware, I have been engaging the hashtag answers protestants since Monday the 12th and the 13th of October 2020 respectively. I declared my affinity with their crusade against all forms of police brutality. I took all the request, the hashtag five for five, which was a demand that I took to Mr. President, President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, and to the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, in Abuja. They were all acceded to from my discussions with them. Indeed, I could say we were making progress, although the pace was slow, and indeed very slow, due to the lack of an acceptable leadership amongst the answers protestants. Fellow Lagosians, events took a different turn from Saturday and Sunday, they think October 2020, as criminal elements took advantage of the farm orders handed down to the officers and men of the Nigerian police not to resort to shooting as a rule of engagement. For instance, on Sunday at Ogoloto area in Ikurudu, armed gangs unleashed mayhem on one another and on innocent citizens. Whilst this was happening, other criminal elements joined in attacking other innocent citizens who were returning from church services. There were reported cases of violent robbery. There were reported cases of citizens being raped and women and girls were scrambling to safety. These were mothers. These were wives. These were sisters. These were daughters of our fellow citizens. Other criminal elements in turn began to unleash on citizens in different parts of the state. From Fagba in Iju area of Lagos to Ebutemeta, where in Ebutemeta, 19 officers and men of the RRS were severely injured by armed thugs. The level of insecurity in different parts of the state became heightened with the multiple attacks at various police stations. This lawlessness blossomed into attacking and leeching of police officers at Habad Macaulay and also at Alapere, areas of Lagos. This took a more dangerous turn 
yesterday morning, 28th of October, when the Orile Igomu police station, the Ajeromi in Ajegule police station, and later the Lasamaja police stations were all raised down by all of these hoodlums, by arsonists. Chaos took another dimension at one of our local government headquarters in Ajiro Omin local government. This headquarters yesterday morning was raised down completely, looted, burnt down with over 40 vehicles in the premises, burnt down, commercial bank in the vicinity, looted and burnt down. Woodlums even make attempts at entering both their papa pot and the tin can pot yesterday morning. As this were unfolding, I had to do further consultations and we respected civil society leaders, some of our religious leaders, some of our traditional rulers, and some concerned parents. We intensify our efforts as a government to persuade the leading lights of the NSAS pro protest to suspend the protest in view of the rising insecurity in the state. We made the case that their battle has indeed been won. We made the case that we additionally considered that they could resume their peaceful protest in Lekki and Alausa once we have succeeded in taming the rising wave of insecurity in the states. To achieve this, however, we needed to blanket the stoppage of all forms of protest so as to make it difficult for the violent tendencies that are creeping in amongst the peaceful protestants. Our governance of security strategy requires that we do not make a different rule for different groups of protestants at different times. Sadly, we did not succeed in persuading the group of protestants at the Lekki Toll Plaza to agree to this. Fellow Lagosians, we were able to persuade the many protestants at Alausa and they were dispersed peacefully ahead of the start of the curfew. Many of our youths at the Lekki Toll Plaza insisted on continuing with the protest. Sadly, there was no leadership to appeal to as they had continually maintained that remaining leaderless was indeed a strategy for them. For clarity, it is imperative to explain that no sitting governor controls the rules of engagement of the military. I have nonetheless instructed an investigation into the ordered and the adopted rules of engagement employed by the officers and men of the Nigerian army that were deployed to the Lekki toll gate last night. This is with a view to taking this up with the higher command of the Nigerian Army and to seek the intervention of Mr. President in his capacity as a commander in chief to unravel the sequence of events that happened yesterday night. Fellow Lagosians, whilst we pray for the swift recovery of the injured, we are comforted that we have not recorded any fatality as against the widespread circulation 
on social media. Both myself and the leadership of my Ministry of Health have been going round. Indeed, we went round all the hospitals last night. We went round the mortuaries last night to see and to monitor for ourselves what has happened and to look and identify the injured protestants. It is therefore relevant to let you know that we have also personally visited the hospitals that took in these patients. Ten patients were at the General Hospital in Lagos. Eleven patients were at the two locations of the Reddington Hospital, both in Lekki and Victoria Island. And another set of four patients were at Vidic and later transferred to the Grenville Hospital, also in Victoria Island and in Aja area. And I want to expressly say that over the night, two of them had to go through surgery. And I'm happy to say that they're both stable. And they're recovering very well. Quite a number of the others are just mild to moderate states. Indeed, three of them has been discharged. And I'm told this morning that additional three or four will be discharged any time from now. Fellow Lagosians, in the insensitive mood, with the mood of the nation at this time, I have directed further that we have an immediate suspension of all state activity for the next three days, except those that are connected with the governance of security in the state and the management of the current issue. I've also directed that it, at all public buildings, if we can reach, that will lower the flag for the next three days as a mark of respect and solidarity for the protests. It may seem like the darkest hours of our history as a people. Our sun will rise again. From the present ashes of our morning today, a bright morning shall emerge from the womb of time, and we, as Lagosians, shall rise again. From the lowest place where this incident has thrown us, we shall rise with the wings like the phoenix and regenerate ourselves with new strength for a brighter tomorrow. As we walk this face in our history, let us remain one resilient people under God with absolute faith, trusting that we shall indeed rise again. Where we're not in faith, I apologize for everything that has happened. I want to once again, and passionately from the depth of my heart, appeal to our Timinutes, to our Protestants, that they should please give peace a chance. There have been several reported cases of arson, of destruction, already this morning. I want to plead with parents. I want to appeal to guardians. I want to appeal to our citizens, especially our youth, that I am for you. I am with you. I feel the pain and I understand that indeed you are not happy with what the turn of events had been last night. I want to say once again that as your governor, 
I will do everything to ensure that every life indeed do matters. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>